Welcome to another Breeders Cup edition of Sports Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the pleasure of being joined by Matt Breeders Cup Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm terrific. Looking forward to doing another Breeders Cup show. We're going to put a little twist on it today, though. A little twist, Matt. A little twist. Yes. As always, we're brought to you by Keeneland Select. And today, folks, we're going to do something totally different with this Breeders' Cup. The draw is coming out today, but we're talking about some of our favorites. Matt's favorites, my favorites. The first thing I want to know, Matt, in the Breeders' Cup 2015, you can pick from any of the 13 races. Who is your most likely winner? No surprise coming from me, Brian. It's been the same all year long. My most likely winner is American Pharaoh. Really? He, he is the Triple Crown winner, Brian. He has done things that no other horse has ever done. And it's kind of bothering me that so many people are almost discounting American Pharaoh. I think he's training fantastically. I think Mar American Pharaoh is going to close out his amazing career in an amazing way in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I just want, I'm, while I'm talking, we're watching the the Derby replay, and I just want to remind the fans of what he did in that race. It was the mile and a quarter. He broke from way outside. He ran with some of the best horses in that amazing three-year-old crop. He beat Dortmund. He beat Firing Line, who I still think are two of the best horses to set, set foot on the track this year. Someone's going to have to be awfully, awfully good to beat Farrow on Saturday in the Classic. Wow, you sold me, Matt. I, I wasn't sure who I liked in there until that speech on American Pharaoh. I think he's the one to beat. But Matt, it's an awfully tough race to make him your most likely winner. Good for you. Let's see American Pharaoh do it. You know who my most likely winner of the whole Breeders' Cup is, Matt? Love to hear it, Brian. Songbird, Matt. Songbird. Two-year-old Philly, Jerry Hollendorfer Barn. Fox Hill, Philly, she's been simply dominant in three races out in California. People knew about her before she ever ran, and I could see why. The Maiden Race, the Del Mar Debutante, and the Chandelier were just overpowering. She has an amazingly long stride. It's fluid. It's easy. Kind of almost American feral like She looks like a woman playing with the girls on this field. Now, California is different than what she's going to see in Kentucky, but you know what? I think the horses she beat, namely uh, Land Over Sea, one of her main competition in the Juvenile Phillies, and Pretty and Cool, neither one could touch her out there, and I think those are two of the best two-year-old Phillies in the country. Don't forget Pretty and Cool, who we see uh, running second to her, a well-beaten second to her in the Del Mar debutante, came, came across country to New York, won recently in a nice stakes race over good competition. Matt, as much as I'd like to see Rachel's little girl, Rachel's Valentina, do it, I just think Songbird is a little bit too good right now. She is my most likely winner at Breeders' Cup 2015. I think that's a very likely pick for most likely winner, Brian, but the tables are turned this year. The West Coasters have to come east and could be tricky. Could be tricky, but don't forget, American Pharaoh is a West Coaster, Matt. Okay, so we did most likely winner. Who is the horse you would most like to see win? Well, I'm going to have to, to go to dovetail on your songbird uh, pick, and Rachel's Valentina is the horse I'd most likely to win. Sentimental choice. I spent time with her this summer at Saratoga before her maiden start. Her two wins were terrific. Is As you said, Brian, it's Rachel's little girl, a favorite of both of ours. Since it's a it's picking a horse I'd like to win, I'd love to see Rachel Valentina win the juvenile filly. Well, despite me saying that Songbird is the most likely Matt, I would be happy as punch to see Rachel's Valentina do it in the Breeders Cup Juvenile Phillies. Interesting. So you you played off of my race. I think I'm gonna turn the tables and do it to you. Now American Pharaoh has his triple crown, he's a great horse. Beholder, what a marvelous mare. It's odd that my most likely horse is in the classic, but it is. What can I say? I'm a sucker for Frosted. Frosted is my favorite horse in training. 
I, I just feel like he's been knocking on the door, knock, knocking on that door so hard all year. He did win two million dollar races, the Wood Memorial and the Pennsylvania Derby, but neither were the big, big race that he needs, that he that he uh, almost deserves in my eyes to get. I think he can do it. I think McLaughlin has him better than ever. Unlike some of those others who skipped that last prep, he went to Pennsylvania and he ran huge in the Pennsylvania Derby. I'd like to see Frosted finally have his day. Frosted in an upset wins the Breeders' Cup Classic. That would make me happy, Matt. And I wish you good luck with that, Brian Zipsy. I'm probably going to need it with American Pharaoh, Beholder, Honor Code, Tonalist, Keen Ice. But thank you, Matt. I'll take your good wishes. How about the top pick, Matt? We talked about most likely winner, but what about the horse you're probably most looking forward to placing a bet on because they're not going to be chalky? For me, it's I'm going to go into the, one of the most contentious races on the Breeders' Cup card, and that's the sprint in the battle of Run Happy and Private Zone. I'm a big fan of Run Happy. While I'm talking, let's watch the stretch run of the King's Bishop, which was Run Happy's coming out party, where the nation got to know Run Happy uh, as well as we did uh, from her early race, from his early races. Run Happy uh, is a freak. He is super fast. He can run fast from the gate to the wire in the six furlongs. The post position draw this afternoon helped me out a little bit there with uh, Run Happy getting the five hole. Private zone way out in the 13 hole. Maybe that little edge there is what Run Happy will need to win the race. Not a big price here, probably second choice, but Run Happy is a horse that can still get better. Private zone, I think, is at the top of his game. Interesting, Matt. Run Happy, you didn't pick an easy race, and, and that's why I think you'll get some decent odds. I think, though, that you might be surprised. I think Run Happy might be the favorite come post time. He shouldn't be a low favorite, though, that's for sure. Run Happy is uh, maybe just a special, special animal. Interesting race. I'm going to go a different way, Matt. I'm going to look at another tough race, and I'm not going anywhere near the chalk. For my Keeneland Select account, I am going to be betting Exaggerator. Exaggerator in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Matt. I don't think he'll be the favorite, second choice, third choice. Maybe he'll be the fourth choice, maybe the fifth choice. I'm looking for eight to one or more on this horse. Exaggerator is the son of Curlin, who has proven to me time and time again. That's where I met time and time again, even though we're talking young two-year-olds here. Because in his maiden win in California, he looked like he was dead to right, dead, dead beaten in the stretch. And he somehow exploded late to get up to win that maiden. Then he comes to Saratoga between horses. He doesn't have anywhere to go. He busts through. He makes his own hole. And he fights off a good horse in Saratoga Mischief to win the Saratoga Special. Then, after being sick and missing the hopeful, he comes back in a mile 16th against a really good field at Keeneland. You expect him for two reasons to be a little short that day, Matt. Mile 16th, first, first try around two turns. Keeneland was not exactly a fast track then. Plus, he had that little illness which sidelined him just briefly. So, I expected him to be short. And the fact that he ran another race where he had a little trouble on the turn, had to wait... Then he made his own move with a quick burst through horses, got the lead and looked like a winner until he came up short late. I think Exaggerator's going to move forward off that performance, Matt. And I think Exaggerator moving forward is going to mean a win in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Eight to one? How's that sound? I love your pick, and I think you're probably going to get that price in a wide open race where the favorite in that race is not going to be a very short favorite. And Nyquist. Also, got a, got a very outside post today, so I think the favorite, like you said about Private Zone, might be vulnerable or a little more vulnerable because of the post. All right, Matt, we've, we've done some interesting choices here. Let's do one more. I want to know which race, which Breeders' Cup race here at Keeneland, 2015 Breeders' Cup, Matt, which is the race you're most looking forward to seeing? Well, I'm, I'm going to just say two here. I'm really looking forward to seeing the two big turf races, the mile and a half turf and the turf mile with the battle of the Americans against the Euros. 
I'm going to get to see the ARC winner, Brian. Golden Horn. It's probably the closest I'm going to get to see an ARC winner, Brian. I don't know if getting over to see the ARC live is something that I'm ever going to accomplish. So terrific Euros. Some great Americans. I'd love to see an American upset. I'd love to see Teppin win the mile. I'd love to see the Pizza Man or Big Blue Kitten pull off a huge upset in the turf. Great American Euro battles. USA, 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 Matt, I'm with you. That's that's fun. We want to see the best USA turf horses run against and maybe beat those European superstars. How about the Pizza Man and Golden Horde coming down the lane together in the Breeders' Cup turf? How fun would that be? That would just be amazing, as exciting as it can get. Brian, who is your, what's your race that you want to watch most? Well, Matt. Uh, no surprises here. I, I may have thrown out a few surprises today, but for me, it's the Breeders' Cup Classic. It, it was an easy answer, frankly. You have a Triple Crown winner. You have a mare who's won grade one races in four consecutive years. No one's done that in nearly 40 years. She's Beholder. Uh, Pacific Classic made me a believer that she is just a real Hall of Fame mare for sure. Keen Ice and Frosted, I think, are really good three-year-olds that are getting even better. Honor Code, what an interesting horse. Honor Code is coming from the clouds as he does, and he's won a lot of big races. Tonalist, as good a mile and a quarter horse as anybody in the country? That's not out of the question, and I can see Tonalist running a big race. So you throw in the big six there, a few other interesting horses, but mostly you throw in a, a triple crown winner, the first we've had in 37 years, Matt. That's a, that alone is enough to make the Breeders' Cup Classic the race I'm most looking forward to coming this weekend. That's why they put it last on the two-day card, Brian. There you go, Matt. It should be fun. Folks, I hope you enjoyed Matt and I looking at some of our favorites. We gave you our most likely winner. We also gave you our top betting horse. We gave you the most horse we'd like to see win, and we'd like the, the race that we'd most like to see. That's easy for me to say. Matt, thank you again for joining me. Absolutely, and... Our last Breeders' Cup show we'll be doing together on Thursday in Kentucky. In Kentucky together Thursday. I can't wait, Matt. Uh, Ember Marr is our wonderful producer. Thank you, Ember. And, of course, we were brought to you today by Keeneland Select. As Matt said, folks, we'll see you in a few days. Happy Breeders' Cup week.